I'm Chelsea. A few weeks ago, my father, who had been battling illness, passed away. <sighs> I wish I could have shown him his grandchildren. Such words escaped my lips, along with a sigh. I got married when I was 25. That was exactly five years ago. At my wedding, my father and I made a promise. I'll let you know first when I get pregnant. But that promise remained unfulfilled. That's about the only regret I have about my father. Since his illness was discovered a year ago, I've done everything I could for him. I regularly returned to my parents' home and visited the hospital with my mother. I increased the frequency of phone calls and video chats. I did everything I could think of. Still, I can't help but wonder, could I have done more? I muttered. My mother sitting next to me reassured me. You did well, Chelsea. Really? Yes, your father would be satisfied. Just then, my sister Portia returned. I'm back, brought the lawyer. My sister entered the living room saying so. Behind her was a man in his mid-forties. I assumed he was the lawyer, and he handed me his business card. I'm Samuel, the attorney. Thank you for coming. Please have a seat. Excuse me, then. My mother guided the lawyer Samuel to his seat. As soon as he sat down, my sister blurted out, I heard from this lawyer that Dad left quite an inheritance. It's not all for you, Portia. I know that. My sister, now in a bad mood, glared at me. I glared back. My sister and I don't get along. We used to be okay. But things turned sour when we found out about Dad's illness. One reason was my sister's arrogant attitude. No matter how many times I reached out, she never visited our father. Of course, I may have said it wrong. I might have been a bit harsh because I was worried about him, but her reaction was also a problem. You're not a child. You don't have to be so stubborn. When I said that, my sister retorted, I'm not being stubborn. I live in the city. It's not easy to come. It's the countryside. But you can get here in two hours by car. Those two hours are tough. It costs money. It's money that's important to you? Of course it is. I'm busy, so stop contacting me. And with that, she finally stopped talking. Even if she lives far away, she could visit once in a while. I always thought so. That's why our relationship deteriorated so quickly. In the end, my sister never visited our father, so our relationship remained strained. Sensing the tension, the lawyer intervened. Let's calm down, please. Okay, I'm sorry. I apologized, and the lawyer nodded before continuing. As I mentioned on the phone, I have your husband's will. When did this happen? My mother murmured. A few weeks before he passed away, he contacted me. So you went to the hospital? Yes. I had him write the will in front of me, with his primary physician present. It turns out they had arranged for the primary physician to contact the lawyer when my father passed away. So after my father passed away, he contacted the lawyer. In turn, the lawyer reached out to us. That's how it happened, and why I'm contacting you now. The lawyer said, pulling out a white envelope. He placed it in front of us. This is the will. That's definitely Dad's handwriting, I muttered, verifying the characters on the envelope. My sister Portia seemed a bit sulky. Never mind, just tell us what's in it. I'm busy, you know. Very well, the lawyer said with a wry smile, opening the envelope. Inside was a single piece of paper. This is what was written there. It stated that besides the house and land, my father's inheritance included some savings and a storage shed. We knew about the house and land, but what's this about a storage shed? As I was pondering this, my sister angrily said to the lawyer, Wait a minute, you didn't mention the farm. The farm? Yes, the farm Dad used to work on as a hobby. My father used to run a company in the next town. But after turning 50, he began to feel his age. I'm thinking of closing the company. I want to take it easy. Is that okay? I heard this when I was in high school. My sister, who was in college at the time, opposed it, but my mother and I, concerned about my father's health, agreed. Don't worry about the money, Portia. We have enough savings. My father reassured her. Reluctantly, she agreed. After that, my father really did close his company and started farming near our home. It feels good to move my body while farming, he said, looking happy. Seeing him like that, I felt glad I had agreed. But my sister didn't seem to feel the same. 
She had said she would return home after graduating from college, but instead, she got a job near her university. Eventually, she married the CEO of an IT company she met through work. Anyway, that's why father was farming until he got sick. My sister insists that the farm should also be part of the inheritance. The lawyer reviewed the documents after hearing this from my sister. He quickly found a note and said, The farm is rented land. Rented? I thought we owned a large piece of land, my sister said, disappointed. Indeed, the farm where my father grew vegetables was spacious, but it might be too much for us, who know nothing about farming. Maybe it's good that it's rented. That's what I thought. The conversation then shifted to dividing the inheritance. As for the division of the inheritance, the house and land go to the wife, the lawyer said. My sister grinned. So, we can divide the rest however we want? Please divide the savings and storage shed fairly between you two. Savings means cash, right? I'll take the cash. How much is it? The savings amount to about $100,000. There's no need to pay inheritance tax for this amount. Then I'll take the 100000 in cash, my sister declared triumphantly. But I couldn't agree with such a selfish arrangement. I strongly protested against my sister. Wait a minute. I object. Why? I'm the eldest daughter. That's irrelevant. You can have the storage shed, what even that is. What even is that, anyway? My sister turned back to the lawyer. Flipping through the documents, the lawyer answered, It's the storage shed next to the farm. You'll inherit the building, the land, and its contents. With land? My sister's eyes lit up. Even though she's married to the CEO of an IT company, does she still want more money? As I was wondering this, the lawyer told my sister the following. The land comes with it, but it's about 65 square feet, roughly the size of a small bedroom. A small bedroom? Yes, here are the photos. The lawyer placed photos of the shed on the table. Pictures of both the interior and exterior were displayed. The exterior clearly looked like a rundown shack. The inside contained only basic tools like hose, scissors, and shovels. Nothing that seemed valuable. I don't want it, my sister grimaced. I peeked at the photos, too. It was all very ordinary. These are sentimental items, but they won't bring in money. As I was thinking this, my sister spoke. Fine, I'll take the cash. You can have that dirty shed. Hold on, that's not fair. You agreed to the vegetable farming. What are you complaining about now? Uh, it was hard to argue when she put it that way. Still, if I didn't say something... She'd take all of Dad's inheritance. So we're good then, my sister pressed me. As I struggled to answer, my mother chimed in. As long as Portia won't complain later, I have no objections. There's no way I would. Then Portia gets the cash and Chelsea gets the shed. Okay, it's settled then, my sister grinned. Feeling uneasy, I immediately objected. Well, I'm not satisfied. Oh, give it up. But... You're so greedy, aren't you? That's not it. You're such a hassle. You care more about Dad than money, right? My sister's words left me speechless. Of course, family is more important than money. Money is important, but it's not something to compare with family. While I was thinking this, my sister quickly ended the conversation. In the end, my mother got the house and land. My sister got Dad's savings. All that was left for me was the dirty shed. After that, my sister signed a document promising not to complain about the inheritance division. <laughs> she left, laughing loudly. I was full of complaints. I couldn't help but vent to my mother. Mom, why didn't you help me? I did help you. How? You just sided with Portia. That's not true. I made sure you got the shed. Huh? I'm not happy about getting that shed. You might find something surprisingly good if you look closely, my mother said with a smile. I could only puff out my cheeks in response. The next day, I took the key from the lawyer and headed to the shed near the field. It was a ten-minute walk from home, a rural road where no one else passed by. I finally reached the field my father had rented. For the past year, he had been hospitalized, so the field was empty. I opened the shed with the key. Wow, it's dusty. The shed was quite dusty, probably because no one had cleaned it. 
Still, there might be something sentimental from Dad. Thinking this, I looked around the shed. Nothing special here. It was just a dirty shed after all. All I found were tools Dad had used for farming. They could be considered sentimental, but they weren't anything special. Maybe I should just take what's inside for now. I mumbled, looking around the shed. That's when I noticed something. Huh. It looks smaller than from the outside. Maybe it was the dim light, but the inside of the shed felt a bit cramped. Is it just my imagination? Thinking this way, I stepped outside the shed, but something still felt off. After pondering for a bit, I decided to walk around to the back of the shed. The backside was adjacent to a thicket of various trees. To my surprise, there was another door there. Wait, another entrance at the back? I gasped. When I looked from inside the shed, there was only a wall, meaning the only entrance was the door I had used. Yet from the back, there was a door. What's going on? I thought about it. A door on the back should be visible from inside, too. But it wasn't. That meant there had to be a wall in between. In other words, there was a space accessible only from the back. The moment I realized this, I got excited. This must be Dad's surprise. Dad always loved surprises. He even surprised me on my birthdays. Memories flooded back, and I found myself tearing up. I quickly returned inside the shed and began searching for the back door key. If it was Dad, he would have hidden it somewhere in the shed. With that gut feeling, I rummaged through the shed. After a while, I found two keys hidden in the handle of a shovel. I went around to the back and tried one of the keys in the door. With a click, the door opened. What could be in here? The space inside was indeed cramped, only about three feet wide. A large safe stood alone in the space. Is this from Dad's company? I recognized the safe. It was the same one I saw in the corner of his office when I was a child. Nostalgic. I hugged the safe. This was a true memory of my father. I felt fulfilled. This alone made the inheritance worthwhile. But knowing Dad, this couldn't be the end. There's got to be more surprises. I muttered and inserted the second key into the safe. With a slightly rusty sound, the safe opened. What? No way. The moment I saw the contents, I was stunned. Inside was an unexpected inheritance. What should I do? Oh, I have to tell Mom. I locked the safe and rushed to my mother. After explaining the situation to her, I called my husband. And with his help, we moved the safe from my parents' house. Then it hit me. The contents of the safe were undoubtedly Dad's. However, if it's part of my inheritance, including the shed, I might have to pay inheritance tax. Better get this checked out thoroughly. The contents of the safe were clearly valuable. I decided to consult the lawyer. Inheritance tax? For that, you should. According to the lawyer, it's better to consult a certified public accountant. So I got a referral to an accountant from a friend. I left all the complicated matters to that accountant. Half a year passed in this way. Just when I thought things had finally settled down, my sister showed up near my home. What brings you here all of a sudden? Uh, well, I had some business at our parents' house. So you stopped by? Yeah, something like that. My sister's behavior was strange. It's funny, no matter how you look at it. Even if my home is close to our parents, it's still a 20-minute drive. We're not the kind of sisters who would casually visit, especially after the tension of her dad's inheritance. It's not a relationship that comes to play carelessly. I couldn't shake off my suspicion as I looked at her. Meanwhile, my sister, acting a bit nervous, asked, Can I come in? Sure, but what's the matter? I have something to talk about, my sister said, forcing a smile. Reluctantly, I let my sister into the house. After I served some coffee, she started to fidget and then began to speak. So, did you win the lottery or something? What? No, I didn't. Then did your husband get a bonus? I tilted my head, puzzled. I never buy lottery tickets because I'm not interested. My husband, who's a salaried worker, does get a holiday bonus, but it's not that time of year. 
What on earth is she talking about? Confused, I asked her directly. Hey, what are you talking about? Suddenly, my sister got angry. What? Are you making fun of me? No, what are you talking about? Money! Money! You have it, don't you? Money? Yes, I heard about it. My sister began to speak excitedly. It was a story from a few days ago. Living in the city, my sister had run into our aunt by chance. The woman started the conversation like this. I know how hard it's been for you since you lost your father. Are you doing okay? Yes, well, I visited him many times when he was sick. Thank you. But you must be relieved, right? Getting such a big thank you gift. Thank you gift? Yes, your sister sent me a $500 gift card as a thank you for visiting him. A gift card? Needless to say, what caught my sister's attention was the gift card. Hearing that I had sent it, she was convinced I had come into some extra money. You got a windfall, didn't you? Just admit it. My sister interrogated me. Ah, that's what this is about. <sighs> I sighed. My sister didn't like my attitude and yelled. What's with that attitude? Are you mocking me? No, it was a thank you gift. So where did you get the money for it? That's what I want to know. From the inheritance, remember? Inheritance? Yes, I got the inheritance. So I sent thank you gifts to relatives who had helped us. Upon hearing this, my sister frowned. All you got was that dirty shed. Yes, that's true. But you can't sell that for money. But there was a safe inside it. That's where the real inheritance was. A safe? Real inheritance? I carefully explained to her about the watches in the safe. They were all valuable, collected by my father as a hobby during his lifetime. However, I didn't know their exact value. On the other hand, the remaining savings were about $100,000. Considering he was a business owner who could retire early, that amount seemed small. That led me to think he might have invested a lot in those watches. If they're valuable, you'll have to pay inheritance tax. My mother had said after seeing the contents of the safe. What should I do, Mom? When I asked, my mother thought for a moment and advised. Things like this always come out. You should declare it properly. How? Well, let's ask that lawyer we spoke to recently. So I consulted the lawyer again. I was told that if you inherit valuables, the inheritance tax is determined by their value at that time. I was also told that a certified public accountant could handle it for me. So I left it to the accountant. As a result, it was found the watches alone were worth at least $500,000. With watches this valuable, you'll have to pay inheritance tax. How should I pay it? How about keeping the ones you're emotionally attached to and selling the rest? Certainly, it doesn't make sense to me, who doesn't know the value, to hold on to such expensive watches. I'd rather someone who understands their worth have them. With that thought, I sold some of the watches. I used the money from the sale to pay the inheritance tax and sent thank you gifts to the relatives who had helped us. Those thank you gifts were the gift cards my sister was talking about. By the way, what I kept were items like the pocket watch my father often wore. I showed my sister the pocket watch as I told her this story. This one isn't expensive, but it holds the most memories for me. However, my sister frowned upon hearing my story. What? You don't have any left? No, there are still some in the safe. Where's the safe? It's at Mom's. The safe is too big for this house. It's the one Dad used at his company. Hmm. My sister looked away, seeming deep in thought. I felt uneasy seeing her like this. But right after that, she stood up and said, I'm leaving, now that I know where the money came from, and left. Considering how money-minded my sister is, I thought she might demand some of the money from the watch sales. I was relieved she left without making a fuss. However, in my relief, I forgot the unease I had felt earlier. My sister isn't that understanding. I had forgotten that. I was reminded of this late that night, when I got a call from my mother. Chelsea, it's urgent. Come over right away. What happened, Mom? It's just really bad. My mother was frantic and unclear. My husband and I rushed to my mother's house. As we approached, we noticed something strange. The area around my parents' house was lit up in red. What's going on? The reason became clear as we got closer. 
Several police cars were parked outside my parents' house. I pushed through the crowd and called out to my mother. What happened, Mom? Well, Chelsea, you see? According to my mother, it was after 9 p.m. Feeling tired, she had gone to bed already. Soon after, she heard strange noises. Sounds like someone searching for something came from beyond the door. Oh, it's a burglar! That's what my mother thought instantly. However, she was the only one in the house. Feeling helpless, she decided to escape through the window. Looking back, she saw the light of a flashlight moving inside the house. This is definitely a burglar! Convinced, she ran to the neighbor's house and said, Help! There's a burglar! However, it wasn't a burglar at all. It was my sister, who had sneaked into the house. She had gone to rummage through the safe after hearing my story. Neither my mother nor the neighbor had any way of knowing this. Soon the police arrived, and naturally my sister was shocked. Realizing she was in trouble, she tried to make a quick escape. Of course, it's her own family home, so there's no need to run. Yet in her panic, my sister thought she had to escape. In her rush, she bumped into the open door of the safe. Just then, the already unstable safe toppled over falling right onto her as she tried to flee. So Portia got trapped under it? Yes, that's what happened. Is she okay? She was taken to the hospital by ambulance, but she keeps saying her leg hurts. What on earth was she thinking? I was truly dumbfounded. Afterward, my mother and I apologized to the police officers who had come to help, feeling bad for calling so late. I also phoned my sister's husband. Wait. You're saying Portia broke into her own family home and got injured? Yes, that's correct. What is Portia doing? She doesn't even do housework. I'm really sorry about my sister. That's it. I'm filing for divorce. Divorce? Actually, according to my sister's husband, she had racked up a considerable amount of debt. Apparently, she had been spending a lot on brand name items. He had just found out, and they had a huge fight. In the end, my sister stormed out of the house saying, I'll borrow from mom and pay it back. Turns out, she had already used the $100,000 she inherited to pay off her debts. Still short, she came to me to scrounge for more money. Learning about the contents of the safe led to her actions, which in turn led to this whole mess. No wonder her husband was furious. In the end, my sister, who had fractured her leg, was hospitalized. Her husband came to the hospital and started talking about divorce. Naturally, my sister made a scene. I'm not getting a divorce. Absolutely not. But it was too late. Her husband had brought the divorce papers. Seeing them, she had no choice but to sign. Now she's lying in her hospital bed, stunned. There's a part-time job magazine next to her, so she's probably planning to start working part-time to pay off her debts. That would be a relief for me. As for me... I decided to move back to my parents' home after all the commotion. Of course, I'm worried about my mother, but there's another reason. I found out I'm pregnant. My husband and I talked it over and decided to move back home and have my mother help us with the children and childcare. I wish I could have told my father about the pregnancy while he was alive, but I'm sure he would be happy for us. So I'm looking forward to giving birth to a healthy baby.